Here we go. Mother right. Trying to do a <laughs> control, and then here comes Graham. Jeez. Yo, those wheels are ugly. <laughs> he bought those wheels for me. How's it going guys? We're back again for another episode of Your FM Builds and today we have actually a pretty special episode for you because uh, previously, as you may know, we built our Nardo Gray RS3 which made about 800 wheel horsepower that we gave to that in blue. We never truly showcase what the whole process of building an RS3 to those levels of horsepower are. And fortunately, we actually had a commissioned RS3 build in this week. So we figured, why not start it off and show you guys from A to B what an entire build process would be with us and what parts you would need when building your R3 to those higher powered levels. So we're gonna actually talk with our lead audio technician, um, Brandon. He's the one who's actually the lead on all these R3 higher horsepower builds. So we're definitely gonna learn a lot today because that man is a genius when it comes to Audi. So please sit back and let's check out this R3. Alright guys, so we're here at our Atlanta store and we're joined by our lead audio technician, Brandon. He's the one kind of handling this entire build and all of our future R3 builds. Uh, what's up dude? How's it going? Doing alright. How you doing? Uh, so, the R3 build, R3 build has already started. As you can see, the engine is now fully torn down. So, last we checked in, we pulled the engine out and started tearing it down. So, tell me about what kind of process you expect when we bring our cars in, when we bring a car in for a full build like we are doing with this R3. So, before we even throw any parts at the car, normally do an inspection of the car just to make sure that the car and everything is healthy. Yeah, even um, cars as new as this, it can still be. Oh, yeah. Nice. So, drain all the fluids, inspect all the fluids, make sure there's no metal in them, um, make sure everything looks fine, like the maintenance and the upkeep is all good. Okay. And then normally, as far as build-wise, since this one is a quite extensive build, I normally start from the easiest and the quickest thing first, and then I get into the nitty gritty. So I've already installed like the DECA clutches and the trans and so, yeah, so got that taken care of. At least to what we're actually doing, so, how similar is this to what we've done to our first R3 build with our car, the Nardo Gray car? This is pretty much the same build. Um, this customer actually went uh, a little wild with the um, with the bushing ones. inserts. And <laughs> oh, I noticed he got all. He got all, yeah. every single one of them. <laughs> Everyone. Front, front subframe, rear subframe, yeah. everything. He's making sure this thing does not wiggle at all. No, not at all. Actually, let's go down and see what the whole parts with this is. We have a beautiful big able full of this part so all right so with doing engines of course you always have to get a minimum of two oil filters but this is every nut and bolt for this engine that needs to be replaced during so the teardown whatever hardware we take out is being replaced with fresh new hardware yes oh, awesome no questions asked nice everything's going to be torqued to the spec yes, yes. <laughs> 90 and 90 and <laughs> whatever audi says <laughs> that's where we're going and then I see here we have the Halifax controller. So why would you need a Halifax controller even though it's Quattro? Is that um, because even though it is Quattro, it doesn't mean that it gets the 60-40 perfect split. Yeah. And in certain situations, you're, as a driver, are gonna want to change your ratio up. Um, especially, let's say, if you're trying to do a burnout, you're not gonna want to give any power to the rear. Yeah. Um, and this controller right here will help you adjust all that stuff on the fly. Awesome, so pretty much it goes to put like a 60% bias in the rear, you can. Yes. Awesome. If you wanted to turn this to straight front wheel drive, you can. So. Yeah. Oh, actually, I've heard of Hank Irons has had to do that at races and make it full front wheel drive. And they still run like eights. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So then we have all the support, all the support this engine will ever need of bushings. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. So we have the BFI kit for bushings and then every single ECS suffering bushing. I do a 34 dog mount. Let's see what else we got. Oh yeah, so this is gonna be running on a C E eighty five. So what's the what's the fuel plan for the for the for the engine? 
So it's gonna get, um, basically it's gonna be on flex fuel. Okay. Um, so he can go anywhere from 93 to race E85. Nice. Um, put whatever kind of blend in it, he won't have to worry about it. Well, he will have a gauge inside the car that will read him um, the exact boost, nice. the exact um, Lambo, which for basically for the wide band, and exact numbers for the ethanol content. Perfect. So just in case there was any kind of question about, oh, my car is doing this at this RPM, yeah. oh, what was your ethanol content, he'd be able to know. Oh, and it's pretty easy to toggle through like anything on, on your OEM dash. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. And then it's all, so it has upgraded fuel pump, I see if your ignition coils, and then the upgraded <laughs> injectors. Uh, what size injectors are we running on it? These are 1,000 cc's. Plentiful. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I know the fuel system of these is a little bit different compared to most cars, because it actually has two injectors per cylinder, correct? Yes, so you still have the direct injected, like any of this new stuff, but then you also have the conventional injectors that sit on top of the intake manifold just to give that extra little, you know. It's part of the reason why these, these engines are probably one of the most easy to mod from anything from Audi. Like, has there, any, has there been any other motor from Audi that's kind of been this, substantial performance-wise? Uh, not than we've seen in a very long time. Yeah, obviously there's a, there's a V10s and twin turbos, but that's like a full- Oh yeah, that, that's, that's a different kind of ball <laughs> These game. are like, this is actually like, these are, this really is like a supercar killer kind of platform. Oh, yes. So, yeah. This is like what normal, what some people say as the uh, the German Evo. Dude, basically, now yeah. no, actually when we, when we had that Dune Blue drive our Nardo Gray, He, actually, he was comparing it immediately to an Evo. He's like, it feels like an Evo, but like way easier to drive. Yeah, so. and a way nicer interior. Oh, way nicer. <laughs> yeah, it's actually classy. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then we have, um, let's see, we have catch cans. And actually, it's two. Um, so look, one looks like it's the engine catch can. So why would someone on, on a high horsepower build need to run a, uh, a catch can? Um, just because of whenever you do high horsepower builds, um, as far as piston, um, piston ring clearances, you don't want to have them as tight as they do from the factory. Yeah. Um, just because when you get to that certain temperature, the gap will close and that's be a catastrophic failure. Mm. So normally you open those up, that way it can be able to handle the kind of boost that you want to throw at it. But with doing so, that um, introduces blow by. Um, and that's the whole job of the catch can was is to relieve that pressure outside of the engine. That way you're not fighting, you know, the pressure going into the cylinders versus the pressure in the bottom end or in the top. Nice. And it's, is it the same story for the, for the transmission catch? Can yes. Or? So okay. basically when, um, with the tune that this car will be getting and those uh, stronger clutches, they're going to up the pressure in it. and. To keep most of that fluid inside the trans, it's basically going to need, you know, the space for all that extra air just to, you know, to get out of there without making a total big mess all over the place. So, awesome, awesome. So we got that taken care of. And then we see we have pretty much managing all the airflow, making it easy as possible. So, what do we have here? So we have CTS, intercooler piping, intercooler piping, forged motor sports, and those are actually like the silicone couplers that okay. go from the intercooler to the inner cooler piping. Okay, awesome. And then APR turbo inlet. Yes. And then we have this beautiful billet IRAS. <laughs> Thousand horsepower <laughs> this inner cooler. Is the most beautiful thing on the car is gonna be the inner cooler, god damn. <laughs> oh, and it will be seen. <laughs> right. Oh yeah, oh yeah, because we actually have, so to make it fit, you have to run this, let's see. The bash bar. Oh yes. Which, and that way, because a lot of, um, Companies do do big boy intercoolers, but then they don't get rid of the big plastic piece that covers up half of it. And then you have to hack up the front yeah. backboard. It looks so, this actually makes a nice clean package to where not look all hacked up. All right, and then last but not least, the turbo we're running that's actually going to be making all that extra boost. So here we have. This is the new one? Yes. Okay, so, <laughs> <laughs> also, so here we have, this is the stock uh, unit. Here we have the upgraded. Yes, the TTE. This is basically for the, um, this is the IROS, the triple seven kit. Okay. Um, and that's what this turbo, you know, can do as far as crank horsepower. Okay, and what around what range of power is it? 
too? Should be in about mid 600s. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. And is it, is it is, that's still relatively understressed for this for this platform? Oh, with this, with everything that this customer is doing, because he's also doing pistons, rods, oh, yeah. um, springs, and retainers, that this will be able to do that with no problem. Yeah, and then it, even if need be, he can go bigger and then still oh, not worry about the engine again. Awesome, That's, this is a lot of parts. This is, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have your hands full, sir. So what, what can we expect, kind of what next stages are for the build? So now the engine has been torn down, the, we're gonna be installing all the reinforced bits, the forged pistons and rods. Yeah, so. well I gotta do a little bit of blueprinting before I get to that, oh. just to make sure that all the piston wall clearance is all correct, the um, rod bearing clearance is all correct. So we actually have an engine building room. Can we go in there right in, real quick and actually you can show us sure. what kind of process you take when you are blueprinting an engine? Cause of course. I thought you just put them in. <laughs> <laughs> just hope for the best. <laughs> now we have people who know science and shit, but. <laughs> Back in the days, that's how it used to be. Yeah. 